Hello, son. It's been a while. Oh, hi. Yeah. Wow. Uh. Where did you go, Omni Man? So you're not wanting to go home. So it really is Omni Man, huh? When I am not Everything that you were doing you your whole life was a lie. You wish to Lonely. Alright, to give full sympathy to Omni Man, I know it's not the most obvious candidate for that, but he knew he was doing terrible things, but he was able to put that to the side because he thought it was in service of something greater. Like he had bought that thing, the lie. Like he was born into that, devoted his whole life to that. Now that's gone. So all that's coming back for sure. I mean, maybe he still doesn't care about, you know, the people he murdered. Maybe it's just the family thing. But I would imagine. A cripple here that you this space journey, though. Beautiful but lonely. Yeah, I bet he thought about ending it all. Your laws do not compel me oh, he saved, he saved them. That snapped him back into it. Or snapped him out of it. Get those old saving muscles working again. There's something he must have liked about that aspect of it, right? The superhero, Superman, Earth Savior aspect. I mean, part, part of it probably vanity, but it c couldn't have all been that. Confusing. I don't know who you are, but we owe you our lives. Won't you stay? Tell us your name. Where you come from. My name's John. Dad? There are so many ways Mark could react to this. Anger, a big one. It's Endeavor Todoroki all over again, but <laughs> Omni Man since make Endeavor since look. <laughs> Bad Father Light. Okay, that's a relief. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I missed you. What a complex. Bringing me here? Yes. What a complex situation. We killed thousands of people. Yes. Why would you think I'd ever want to see you again? Yeah, if you're Endeavor, I mean, you just gotta suck this up. You just gotta eat it for a while and hope for the best and also respect Mark's decision one way or the other. You called Mama Pet. He did. Mark, I need your help. I can't believe you put them up to this. Made them lie to me, too. Just listen. I don't have to listen There's something to sincere about this. Mark, look, I made a mistake. Uh, and I've thought about you uh, nothing you can really say. A mistake! Yeah, wow. I mean, that ultimate foot and mouth. You know what? Don't bother. All right, it wouldn't mean anything anyway. I hope you like it here with your new friends. Words won't really cut it. Time might. Navigation was never your strong suit. Come back and we'll talk. Please. What are you gonna do if I don't? Knock all my teeth out again? I'll get you a ship home, but there's something you need to see first. No. Listen to him. Five minutes. For them, not you. Fair. No, no, no. Suck it up. I didn't conquer the Thraxons. They asked me to be their emperor. Emperor, conqueror, what's the difference? It's like kind of ironic ending up in this really weak looking <laughs> species planet that lives like four days. That's real character growth. It's one of those things, there's no real forgiving what Omni-Man did. Forgiveness, maybe not the point. Anyway, I don't blame Mark at all for having this reaction, but I think you can hear him out. There's something about these angry outbursts also that sometimes feel to me like a test, right? Like you want it to be chased a little bit. You think that through the outburst, you're making them earn it. And there's maybe something to that. I mean, if Omni-Man is truly reformed and truly understands the gravity of what he's done, he will accept Mark's decision one way or the other and wait with no guarantee of anything. Oh, you got a new pet. Oh, that that's- this is not the time. You are so not good at reading the room. What the fuck is going on? Did I misspeak? You missed a lot of things. I know this comes as a surprise. Oh shit, I'm surprised. You're married to mom. I can't go well, back I mean, to Earth, uh, Mark. Yeah. Not ever. The life I had there is over. <laughs> yes. Super glad you got to show me how great your life is without us. That's not what I wanted to show you. Can you leave? What could you possibly? Mark? Oh no. Oh, you are so bad at this. You are so bad at this. You gotta be. You gotta. What? You. Yeah, no. You are the worst. You are the worst. Yeah. You. you oh. 
Wow, you fumbled that. <laughs> Fumble of interplanetary galactic proportions. He wasted no time. I thought that galactic journey was like a year, but no, it, that it was a week. I've suffered enough. It's time to start a new alien family. Imagine Debbie finding out about this. You were you with her? <laughs> Every time Omni-Man called Debbie beautiful flashes through her, her memory, casting doubt on everything he's ever said about his physical tastes. You think you have it bad now. You think you feel bad now. All right, that's the thing that would hurt extra bad too, is that on some level Debbie knows if he came back, she would accept him back, for real. Like someone betrays you like that, there's the that pain. Then there's the pain of like hating yourself for still having feelings. Yeah, she misses him a lot. Was it just to be cruel? Just to hurt someone? Everything we built. He does a lot of things to satisfy his own ego. And none of it was real. None of it. You weren't real. Only Mark. Some of it was. That makes it even more confusing. I never even fucking knew you. That's always gonna be true to any extent of anyone, any any relationship, any two people. Well, At least you know who the real one is now. Clone. <laughs> you have all of my memories, my experiences. This changes the whole Clones. dynamic. I'm the clone. <laughs> Finally. This might not work out as well, though. Debbie, it's uh, it's Donald. Donald's got some concerns. Donald may be a zombie. What is Cecil doing? Wow, Eve should really come in and clean this up. And the craziest thing is, the prof doesn't even take attendance. You can show up, not show Yes, up, in, my kind like of class. Treating us like adults? You know you're paying to be here, right? I also paid for the textbook, which I read myself and learned everything the class would have taught me and more in less time. If the class was so special, it wouldn't just be ripped one for one from the textbook. This college actually seems great though. I should have gone to upstate university. Hey, William. Oh my gosh. Is she in the same school? Everything okay? I made a bad building. It wasn't up to code. I trusted you, Eve. He was in a hurry, so I didn't get much of an explanation. That was a week ago. He did say Carol's three weeks. dating a superhero, right? <laughs> <laughs> William was just telling me that the best part of college is skipping it. It totally is. It's super freeing. Like wearing pants with no underwear. Amber, William, you guys coming? Amber. <laughs> well, um... Do you need somewhere to crash? Oh, I keep a place in the city. Is it up to code, Eve? <laughs> you fooled me once before. I, I don't. I don't even know what to say. Honestly, given the genetic roll of the dice there, I think you got lucky. Mom's going through hell back on Earth, and you were getting it on with the grasshopper two seconds after you left. It wasn't like that. He's way older than six months, which means you are- Thraxon biology is different than ours. <laughs> they age very quickly. I was lost when I left Earth. I found these people. They were nice they to me. Lives. It was like I had a purpose again. By now, Viltrum knows I've left my post. They'll track me. He's rogue. And I can't stop them alone. But we... Wow, teaming up to stop the Vil Vilkermites is crazy. And now you want me to risk my life to save some kid you had with another woman while still married to mom? Family is <laughs> complicated. What I did on Earth was... unforgivable. But your brother and all these people will die without our help. This is... Bullshit. The thing that is that makes me so skeptical, though I'm open to being wrong and like seeing more, I think he does actually regret what happened on Earth. I think he does love Mark. I think he does miss Debbie. I think he is afraid of the Vilkermites. It's not clear to me that his experience has made it obvious to him that the way to treat people isn't manipulation. Like he's still definitely going to see himself and his own aims as, as paramount, whatever those aims are. Like even if saving the kid is a, is a better aim than the other stuff on earth. What I'm getting at is it's possible that's not the entirety of his ambition, that there's also something about saving his own skin, maybe going against the Vilkermites. Maybe he has higher aims. I mean, the man needs a purpose and he has very, very refined sense of self-importance and ambition. It's possible he's using the kid and the whole family thing and the, all these poor mantis species as a way of luring Mark in to get him on board to a bigger aim than he's really explaining. One that Mark might not want to be a part of. You're the reason they're in danger. You signed their death warrant, not me. And now I'm asking you to help me save them. It's also really painful for Mark because like, you know, it would have been more of a relief if Omni-Man said to Mark, you know what? Yeah, I did. I did crap this whole situation and engineer it so you would come here because I really missed you wanted to apologize to you. And that's how it seemed at first. But then that quickly gave way to like, no, I need your 
your manpower. If he didn't need that, would he ever have contacted Mark? I mean, these are questions that might arise. Like, oh, I see. You need me physically. You, you need me to fight with you. It's not exclusively about wanting to see me. And therefore, how do I know it's at all about having wanted to see me? Omni Man, he just, he's not good at constructing a narrative for people. He just doesn't have it in him. It's amazing he survived on Earth that long. This also does <laughs> cast Debbie into some suspicion that she didn't pick up on this. This guy cannot keep his foot out of his mouth. They're good people. How? You're missing the point. I'm thinking. <sighs> so much for having clean space to explore yourself and who you are. What, this is happening now? So much for training. Um, sorry. Dad. Go! I wonder how Omni-Man compares to the other Vilkermites. Come and get it. Wrong choice, asshole. I think you've just murdered someone. At first, it was hard to know him. He was so hurt, so closed off after what happened on Earth. I fell in love with him before I knew his story. Classic stepmom conversation. Nolan loves and misses you. Even if he can't say it to you. He said it to me. Oh, no, no. So it's well. true. The great Nolan fathered a child with an Earth woman. Mark fights the second Velcromite. Stay back. I'm warning you. Maybe I wasn't. Oh, uh, he hasn't really been training. With these disgusting creatures. I felt that. Oh, these are the moments you remember all those times you weren't training. It's still too weak. Nothing has changed. Stay away from my children, Lucan. You knew the consequences when you had them. Whoa, whoa! He saved their lives slower than he turned off that light when he was banging Amber. Wow. Finally, Nolan's killing feels good. Well, he also killed those aliens that one time. That was cool. I know is an interesting line there. Interesting response. You deserve to die. I mean, he's still one of them. Somewhere. You could take a man out of Velcro, but you can't take the Velcro out of the man. How many are here? How many came? Dad! Are you okay? This is such a... This is so crazy. This whole thing. I was not expecting this this episode or last episode. I thought this would be an Omni-Man free season. There's two more. Oh, that's manageable. Eve honestly is so overpowered. Get up. That's right. Watch her become a villain. Just enjoying this a little bit too much. That wasn't up to code. Are those her parents? Those look like her parents. Is this is this Eve's villain origin story? That's just water. You could you could form that, terraform that, whatever. Molecule form that. Throw them into fish. <laughs> oh, that makes much more sense than what I said. I'm starting to think Debbie's not okay. I think she could use some real help. But I'm not sure what the solution is. Debbie? Are you home? Can I come in? Art. I think Art likes Debbie. You okay? I'm fine. I just... <sighs> Reading into it more than we've seen evidence for, I'll bet she alienated some friends too once she found Omni-Man. She built up her whole life around him. With a husband like Omni-Man, who needs friends? That was a mistake. All of her friends are work friends connected to him. I'm not fine. You're not fine, Debbie. Me neither. After all these months, I still can't wrap my head around it. Was all of it a lie? It doesn't really make a difference. I don't even know why I miss Nolan so much. He's barely around. I always thought you were the strong one to handle your life the way you did. Yeah, there's a lot of strength to it. There's also an addiction element to it. I don't know how to feel about this because there's some really nice things about that romantic fantasy. Like only me and you, how lucky it is that we found each other. At the same time, there's a delusional aspect of it. You know, like people are just people. It doesn't necessarily say anything about you that you have a cool story. The romanticization can also be a part of 
trying to scrape value out of things to make oneself feel better. And it's not easy to tease out the line between what's what. I mean, I know the, the feeling of like having a relationship and like constructing a narrative around it. We're like, wow, it's so amazing. Isn't this special? Other people don't have this. You know, like what are the chances we met during COVID from two different countries and now we're both in the same country against all odds. What a great story that is. And, and like you get attached to the story, which is not necessarily love for the person, which, you know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But unless I'm missing something, I think if you go all the way in that direction, you don't really have the romance element anymore anyway. You have love for someone, but love is not necessarily a possessive thing. It's not necessarily something that requires a relationship. You know, like I love my friends and I love my family. So is it just the sexual element of it? It's confusing. Like what is the actual healthy, productive, useful, honest part of romantic relationships that is only a function of romantic relationships isn't found elsewhere, if that makes sense. It's a difficult question. I was joking before about how like, where does Debbie go after Omni-Man? That's the part of it that I'm alluding to. Like anyone else would not be as good and romantic in that narrative. Like, what do you do? You date Joe, Joe Schmo, the accountant, after everything that you went through with Omni-Man, after all the, the jealousy you received from other women, telling yourself that you were the most lucky woman in the world, that you were starstruck lovers from different galaxies. It's hard to top that in that way. I think if we're being really honest, part of what Debbie misses is Nolan. Like they did spend a lot of time together. There's no way you don't have some actual real affinity and knowledge of a person with that much space together. Part of it is like the image of the life she once had, which is hard to let go of. It's like I was saying before about Nolan, you know, like his whole life was, oh, I'm on this mission that is glorious. And then he, you know, let a lot of things slide. And then that turned out to be terrible. And now all of the, the things he's been putting off, all the, the reckoning that he hasn't needed to go through just comes flooding in. I mean, maybe one of the answers is raising children. That's something you probably don't do with friends. And that's like a real contribution to the world. I'm a big believer in legacy. And, you know, there are so many ways that you can create that and contribute to the world. But like creating a life is, is a big one. Having that shared journey and responsibility, I think is something special, but that's probably not most relationships. But also, at least in terms of what I grew up believing, it's not really the priority of relationships. I mean, if anything, the primary function of relationships seems to be self-gratification, adding to points on that column. You said it yourself. Nolan was always off fighting something and you made things work without him. And you got Mark. That's real. I mean, she did say that, right? Donald, Donald, Donald. How you doing, Donald? But Donald's a crafty boy. Oh, he knows Cecil's password. Run now! Imagine watching yourself die in black and white. It just looks so damn cool on like Mark. They all got helped. They got the loving hand of... Why? Why do I care about them? They were weak. Do you have to say this with your hand around his throat? Barely a species. Barely a species. How is this better? This is how you should have felt on Earth. Uh oh, you got some human in you too now. Take it out on them. Uh, not on your son. Lucan was weak. Now he's dead. Then he deserves. They like that, yeah. <laughs> that was the right speech choice. I'll kill you for what you did to these people. Then do it. They like that. <laughs> right speech choice. No one has developed affinity. Can Mark do this? I don't know. Worry about yourself, Nolan. He would like to. They can do that too? I promised I'd make it quick. Oof. Yeah, Mark is sort of a weakness in this fight. He never deserved to live. Talking won't keep you alive, Vibor. Mark, what are you doing? She's tearing you apart. <laughs> she is tearing you apart. You need to fight like a Viltrumite. No, I don't kill people. If you don't do this, well, we're all dead. You. This is yeah. It's a weird, dark, dark crossroads here. I don't know. This would have a coming, but yeah, lines for Mark to cross. Hard to really care about them though, the Vilkermites. It'd be amazing if he pulls this up without killing her though. I don't feel like that's really on the table. Nice. Oh, that hurt. She liked that. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, come 
on, Mark. Do you regret attacking my family now? You don't need the ego boost right now. Just smush him and move on with it. Oh, what a wow. Well, you didn't deserve to live, apparently. She liked that. Mark. All is fair, according to Vilkram Law. Are you okay? In customs. No. I'm stabbed. Don't worry. But the other it's the guy. No, wait. The other guy. Let me have a look. Are you still alive? Make sure they're dead. I mean, I was pretty convinced, but uh, all right. It's done. It's not the pleasant space vacation I was expecting. If I'm reading this correctly, Omni-Man being injured is very interesting. Well, although that transmission might have helped them, saying that it's done. Maybe that buys them some time. In fact, it's probably the best thing that could have happened. Otherwise, it would have just been holding down this alien planet forever as waves and waves of Vilkermites attack. That was such a great scene. You wouldn't be protesting half as much if the money wasn't a way to keep a hold on Mark. And on me. We Smart. Did it. We feel we owe you. I support. And I'm done feeling that way. Oh wow, Cecil's losing control left and right. I mean, I think he genuinely also is concerned. He's a complex character. And David doesn't even know the half of it right now. He's got some bombshells coming. Oh, they're... Oh no, oh no, I thought they were done. I thought that was just the three of them. Don't forget the good I did. My work. My deeds. My books. So yeah, savage planet, savage beasts. Oh, he's just trying to cling on to something in his last moments, or what he thinks are his last moments. Please let there have been some good in there somewhere. Please let my son love me a little bit. Oh yeah, brunch. Not the right way. Whoops, and then you see yourself. Poor Donald. Donald the real victim in all this. I mean, I don't know. Thank you, Cecil, no? I don't do that, it's not necessary. Zombie or robot? You don't- you can start slow! Everyone in the show is so excessive with everything. Do you regret that now, don't you? Could have started smaller at a less important part of your body, but, you know. Donald, where the hell are you? We've got a situation. Donald has a bigger situation. Donald already has a situation. In the bathroom. I'll just ask him! Good. Come on, Donald. Alive. Yeah, what happens to Mark now? You've survived your first true battle and proven yourself worthy of your Viltramite heritage. Go fuck it. He liked that answer. You will assume his mission and prepare the planet for our rule. I know this may not appeal to you, given your sympathies. So I'll put it like this. Threats. Blackmail. How do you train? And who trains you? Um, how do I get home? Navigation has never been my strong point. Oh no, the rules have been too too strongly established. I bet this has happened before. I bet this is a cycle that repeats itself. One of you is I bet the original is long dead by another no clone's hands. You can't even make decent lemonade. Oh, he's about to die. Oh yeah, that happened. I was gonna stab him. He's already dead. And the cycle continues. Sometimes things are the way they are for a good fucking reason. Yeah, that's homeostasis. <laughs> Two equal clones. <laughs> wow, that was a crazy episode. Looks like from our college can wait. But yeah, where the hell? How the hell? Who, Eve, maybe. You need Eve if she's not busy becoming a villain. But she went home to her, her parents' house. That That's reassuring. That's such a teenage kid thing, too. Like, he knows his father's out there. He knows about this hostile force that's surely coming. And he does nothing to prepare. Just continues flying around fighting level one enemies. That's no longer an option. But I honestly don't know how, what is the play here. I guess this brings him into contact with the, the interplanetary force, which also doesn't seem great. There's the Justice League, but they're also not so great. They're busy with their shower room drama antics. Oh, yeah. And then there's also the threat of the multiple dimensions and the guy coming for Earth One Mark. The Omni-Man Mark team up was just like action crack for my soul. It was so good. I also really love Debbie's journey. It's her characters become really sympathetic and understandable to me. And I really like the ending of her trying to climb out of it by taking back her own choices in life. People tell you to move on. I think the starting point there is getting back your own sense of personality and self and doing things for yourself in a way that is healthy. You're going to continue living. So live accordingly. And as much as it feels like the state of hell you're in is permanent, it is temporary. And like Debbie obviously hit the pit. Like she hit the worst. I think the real turning point was when she 
had the very honest grief of missing Nolan just what everything that happened. Of course, there's a danger for her that it all gets re reignited when Mark comes back and maybe tells the story, but we'll see. Again, I remember my, my fear for the last episode of season one that I expressed was, what is this without Omni-Man? Here we got it all of a sudden in just spectacular fashion. Mm -hmm.